As a guest at various clinical facilities around the world, I'm often asked to see a few patients, and sometimes they're quite difficult patients, uh, in front of the uh, staff of the uh, uh, clinical school. Um, it's interesting of the, uh, oh, probably 10 patients that I've been presented with over the last few days, every single one of them has been told, you're exaggerating your pain, the pain is in your head, and then I ask them, were, did anyone ever touch you during the assessment? And they said, well, no. Uh, the, a few of them looked at their scans, and yet uh, scans are very poor at indicating the painful tissues. In, in one of our laboratories back at the university, we load spines, cadaveric spines, we create the damage so we know exactly what the insult was to create the damage, and then we do MRI, CT, X-ray, and the damage hardly ever shows on the X-ray. It's not till we get down to microdissection that we see quite uh, uh, extensive damage. So this notion that uh, we can't see it on the MRI scan, uh, off you go now, um, the pain is in your head, is incredulous. It's wrong, and uh, uh, it, it results in a lot of heartache for very solid adults who really know they have uh, pain triggers to be told and dismissed, uh, it's in your head. So I've already shown a couple of uh, diagnostic tests. Uh, of course, the uh, very robust uh, assessment of a patient, which takes a, a substantial amount of time to really converge on a precise diagnosis. That's detailed in my uh, clinical textbook, Low Back Disorders. But I've written a book for the lay public, and they can uh, conduct a self-assessment of their pain triggers, and based on those, they will then be guided as to precisely what to do and not, do, not to do to desensitize their pain triggers. So just to review, uh, once again, Adela, we can do the compressive heel drop. So just relax, go up on your toes, and give a little one and a half times body weight compressive load and then we will engineer as we did before, or play uh, different patterns to engineer out that, that stiffness, or engineer out, pardon me, the pain driven by a lack of stiffness. And we'll build the appropriate stiffness that we need. So stiffness isn't bad. In fact, that's the way patients uh, strategically address pain within their body. Um, we did the seated pull in different postures, and from that, the patient can learn if it is a specific motion, posture, or load that drives their pain. Another one would be extension, for example. So just a baby step forward and spread your feet apart just a little bit. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to bend you backwards into extension. Just work with me now. Just extend back, lift your chin just a bit, and extend back. And I hope you don't have pain, but maybe you do, I don't know. And then we can stress the posterior structures and the disc on one corner and then on the other. And then you might say, hmm, that's getting a bit cranky in your back. And then I would say, why don't you stand on your right leg? Nice, now don't shoot the hip, be nice and tall. And what I just forced was a muscle contraction. Mm -hmm. And now I would take you back to the pain trigger and you would say, either the pain is better or worse. And if it was better, once again, we found a strategy to uh, uh, desensitize the uh, pain trigger. And right again, we know we can take out that extension-driven uh, pain by moving through your hips instead of your, 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 uh, your back. We would teach you how to open a door with a drop step and pull the door, waltz around the door, use a little footwork, etc. And uh, in fact, we teach you to be a good athlete and uh, uh, all based on figuring out your pain triggers with what we call uh, provocative testing. But uh, the public can guide themselves through this series and get a better diagnosis than what they would get from some of their healthcare professionals.